Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Mac 20 Questions and today I want to have a look at things to do with photography. Well I've just got myself a new 600D camera and I'm keen to get out and take some more photos again but ever since I was interested in art, which is since I was 16, I've always been interested in these images that are bright, vibrant, lots of colour and so on. And uh, as you can see from one of my photographs here where I've got my son, he's standing on a rock and basically I, I took that from an original photograph which is something like this one here and I did some work with it. Now this one has been slightly changed because I've got it in Photomatics which is one application you use for doing HDR photography and obviously the sort of uh, images that I like are HDR so but this uh, Photomatics application is pretty good for doing HDR you can do it with one image or you can do it with a number of images that are bracketed so on this one here I'm working with one image and I can choose to change the different styles there's got some built in you see that one goes totally over the top so anyway in Photomatics Pro I could take a fairly standard photograph and do some work with it to make it a little bit more extraordinary shall we say I quite like this one here this compressor deep I find it's a bit dark around this area here perhaps but that's okay we could work with that do a bit of work with the uh, contrast adaptation of that and the colour saturation, we can take the colour saturation down just a little bit now one of the things that I'm interested in lately in this sort of style of photography is something that's vibrant and a bit sort of uh, out of this world is a fellow called Dave Hill Photography these I think are absolutely fantastic photographs and he's built these up and a lot of it's to do with lighting and some of it's to do with due to the way that they're processed once they're back in the uh, studio and I think these photographs are just fantastic. On his site he's even got videos there showing you how he went about doing these photos. So how good is that then? The sort of photographs that I like, this is another HDR photograph. We were in southern France just north of the Pyrenees and that's uh, one I took and here's another one. These are HDR photographs and I like HDR. This one's HDR and probably a bit over the top just the same as uh, that other one I showed you there was over the top but still. Now what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to go into Pixelmator and take photographs like I've got here. This is a standard one that's not had anything done to it and turn it into something a bit more interesting. This one was one that I did previously with Photomatics and this one here, what I'd like to do with this one here is I'd make to make it more interesting using a recipe that is from the Dave Hill group on Flickr. Okay, now if you have a look at this thing here, you go to something like the discussion part of it, right? What you can do is you can find the technique that people use to get something similar. Now, someone here has uh, worked on it in Lightroom, then he's moved into Photoshop and used the high pass filter. I've done something similar as well. But to start with, I couldn't do it in Pixelmate because I hadn't got a high pass filter. But now I do, and I'm going to tell you how you can do it in Pixelmator 2 and get your own high pass filter in there so that you can make your own photographs like this. So this is the one that I used. Let's go back to Pixelmator and see what we can do with this then. Okay, so there's our layers. First thing to do is to duplicate your layer, background layer. Even duplicate it again perhaps. So we'll keep one layer there and we'll keep it just as original. This one here will be our background layer that we're going to do some work on. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to take this layer here and we're going to apply a filter to it. We go to the filter, Quartz Composer, go and look down here and this is one I've brought in. I'll put in the uh, show notes where you can get this from. Use the high pass filter. You'll have to play with these uh, numbers here to uh, get something that's suitable. I put a lot of high pass amount on there and I give it a fair bit on the edges. Luma, just leave that alone and ring and click on OK. And we'll set the blend mode on this layer to vivid light. Get that down here vivid light. That's the first stage of the process then we take that and we're going to merge those two layers then we're going to we're going to duplicate the layer. Okay so what we're going to do now is going to do the high pass filter again and we'll go to filter, quartz composer, back down to the high pass again and I suggest the thing to do with this one is just to maybe just uh, bring it down on the edges and bring the amount down as well and then click on OK and then this time here we're going to have to change the blending to colour. That's right down at the bottom there, click on colour. Now as you see with this here we've actually lost a lot of the uh, colour out of this altogether haven't we? So, Okay so what we're going to do with this here is go to this opacity 
I bring the opacity down a fair bit. I'm actually going to bring it down to 30%, although the recipe said 40% to 60% because I want to keep some of the colour in there. Okay, so we've done that and we're going to now merge those layers, do a duplicate and this time we're going to go for a blur and I don't have surface blur in this here so we're going to use a Gaussian blur. We'll have it around about 8 to 10 and we'll click on OK. As you can see that's um, blurred the whole thing up there so what we need to do is we need to uh, bring some of it back. We'll do that by adding a mask and we're going to do this with our use our brush tool on the mask and we want to have the default colors which should be black and white. We're going to be drawing onto the layer, we're not going to be drawing onto the actual photograph itself okay and I think we need to have a smaller brush size as well. Let's take the diameter down to about 94 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some of this back. So we've got the opacity up there around about 36%, 45%. Blending is normal and I want to keep this here sort of uh, fairly sharp so I'm going to keep around, go around the face there and bring that back. I think I'd like to keep that nice and sort of uh, sharp. I quite like to go around some of the edges as well and just uh, make sure that's got a bit of uh, sharpness to it. Certainly around the eyes is a place where you need to do this and around the hairline is a good place. And if there's some zips and things like that in there then it's a good idea to have those so that they stand out a bit as well. Edges of uh, things like that and that knot in the uh, part there. Now this is again something that's a bit closer to us so I think we should uh, bring this up as well. Have that fairly sharp. And I think some of these rocks down the front here should be sharper as well. So And the hands, that'd be good to have the hands done too. Because I've got the uh, opacity that's 47 there, it means that I've got to go over it a couple of times to fully bring the sharpness back. Merge those two together. So I've got the photograph set now to overlay. I'm getting to quite like that actually. Now we're getting there, getting something like uh, the Dave Hill look that I'm trying to uh, achieve. Okay, so one uh, final filter to uh, put onto this now to finish it off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, merge these two layers because I think I've got that fairly as I like it. Merge layers. Let's go up there to our filters and we'll go to sharpen and sharp mask. Let the intensity up radius up and density down. Okay so there you go I've merged the layers and I suppose I'm fairly happy with that now. I've got a nice sort of uh, contrast there going and the subject is standing out well from the uh, the background. I've got a nice some detail in the rocks there at the front and the hands and the face are looking pretty good and then a bit of uh, sort of uh, blurring to show that this is off in the distance here. Generally I like the colours in it so that's what I'm going to call finished. And that is kind of uh, my way of doing the Dave Hill effect using Pixelmator. You have to be aware though that with the Dave Hill photography that a lot has gone into it in terms of posing of the subjects, the lighting. He uses some really good lights and he has a generator on site with him when he's taking his photos. And then only some of it can be done in post. You want to sort of get some good photos to work with in the first place, something that has good lighting and uh, is interesting in some way or other right from the start. So I hope that has helped with regards to being able to make your photos into Dave Hill type photos using Pixelmator and uh, next I want to have a look at the other photographer that I quite like, it's a fella called Michael Orton. Bye bye now. <laughs>